Some of the other topics you want to address. Uh, the other day, someone uh, said we were being alarmist in talking about long COVID. Uh, and I was saying, well, you just have to factor that in as one of the downsides of not getting vaccinated if you end up with long COVID. So what can you tell us about the numbers of people who end up with long COVID? Yeah, there's huge analysis happening now because obviously this disease has afflicted so many people. We're getting a good uh, picture of, you know, long symptoms. <clears throat> it's at least 10% will have some kind of long COVID. And it's not just things like fatigue or, or sleep disturbance. It's also breathing difficulties, you see, which means your lungs actually have been injured physically, you know. So you might have trouble breathing if you walk up the stairs, say, for example, a little bit of exertion, people get breathless. And they reckon it's about 10% overall. It, it will vary between age groups. It's more common in women than men, for instance, one of the slight differences here. But certainly it's at least 10% of people will have a significant symptom months after they've cleared the infection. And one very good part of the analysis that was if you've been in hospital, uh, you've been 80, 87% of people will have a long-term symptom post-discharge from hospitals. And these are relatively serious things, a bit like, you know, as I say, breathlessness and maybe even some heart problems, you know. So there's no doubt this virus does cause huge harm to our bodies in, in a certain number of people, of course, not everybody. And then there are more long-term symptoms. So again, it re-emphasizes that this is a serious disease. Yeah, and uh, those who suffered from uh, SARS and MERS, they have their uh, long sufferers as well, haven't they? Yeah, precisely. Now, now very, not many people had SARS and MERS, as you may know, from the history of this coronavirus sort of family of viruses. But still, there was a reasonable level of post-viral sy- symptoms. And again, it was things like chronic fatigue, you know, uh, breathing difficulties were a feature there. So what it looks, looks like is if the more severe members of the coronavirus family, which means SARS, MERS and SARS-CoV-2, are inclined to provoke more long-term symptoms, and we, yeah. as we say, we call them long COVID. The second thing is that it's, it's good news in a way that the vaccine is giving people relief from long COVID symptoms. So there's a way to treat it kind of now, you know. So anybody who's had COVID should take the vaccine, and if they have long COVID, those symptoms might begin to resolve more quickly after they've taken the vaccine. Mm-hmm.